Right then. In here I've got my cheese and tomato. It suddenly got very, very windy, everyone. I've had to put my top back on. So I'm not going to have my cheese yet. I've just seen the cows. I don't know if they're on the path or not. But we just have to walk past them, I'm afraid. The hikers have gone past them. Of course, you know, I banged my arm then. The camera fell on my bad wrist. Bloody hurt. No, oh, God, did it hurt. Right, so we're saying goodbye to the trick point now. It's going on for two o'clock. We've got four hours to get back. We've been out four hours. We've walked all the way up one side. <coughs> now, don't forget though, we had lots of hill to climb and and stuff. So basically what we're doing, we're doing a gradual walk back at a nice pace. You don't want to get back two hours early because there aren't any bus. And this is what everyone's feeling. They don't put, and even with the new timetable, they have not put any extra buses on to go to Winscombe. You know, there's no flexibility and you might have to wait three hours for a bus. I mean, it's a hell of a long time to wait. I don't know if there's one at four o'clock-ish. There used to be. But that only gives me two hours to get back and I won't do it in two hours. That's the other thing I know. I know I won't do it in two hours. So I've got a nice window of time. But time can go very fast. You can suddenly be quarter to four. And you'll be sort of, oh my god. Do you know what I mean? So we can enjoy the walk like we did on the way up. Now, if you had a car or anything like that, you wouldn't even be talking about this. You wouldn't be getting anxious. It does make you anxious when you've got real on public transport. Now, these mounds, they've all been eroded. I don't know if the cows disturbed them, but they used to be quite prominent features. And when you were deep in the ditch walking along there, which was a ditch, it was a trough, they were really high up above you. Because this is the type of processional parade as well, walking down here. It's almost Roman, isn't it? I can see something ahead, but I can I can see, I think they're horses actually, what I can see. I think they're horses. Of course, if people feed them, they shouldn't really, because what it is, it attracts the horses to all humans, and not everybody wants to go up close to them. You see what I mean? They're crossing the path, look. They're all crossing over. The wind's dropped again now. Just zoom back to there. Back to the trig point. We won't be out here again now, not this year. No way. No, we won't be out here again this year. Just going to turn off and take a picture of that scene. Right, I'm walking along this very ancient track, everyone. Humps and bumps each side of me. Of some sort of ancient significance to mark a route. It could have even been Roman as well, couldn't it? looks very Roman. It feels very Roman, this route. I'll have to look into it more. I'm starting a course soon with uh, Cambridge University. The Archaeology and Anthropology of Burial and Death. Now that might sound morbid, but the thing is I do a lot of family tree stuff. I go along, I go around a lot of graveyards. I've been in catacombs. And uh, there is always, for a lot of people, a fascination with zombies. And they even cover a bit of zombie history. 
So that's with Cambridge University. Mad Magdalene College, I think it's called, I don't know how to pronounce it. I would like to have done one with Clare College first, uh, really, because um, I'm hoping that something will turn up. Because of the De Clares in our family, Elizabeth De Clare founded that uh, college, or it was named after her. So I did look on their site, and they didn't seem to have anything. Um, I mean, the residential courses would be good, but they're so expensive to stay at uh, the university for, you know, a long weekend or a week. Really, really dear. So I've had to do a distance online one for now. You never know, something might turn up. If I was teaching still, I'd get 50% off the cost. Yeah, it's cost £300. But it uh, sounds like an interesting course. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I did enrol for it, but didn't finish the enrolment um, at the end of start of February. But for some reason, I wasn't ready for it. I just broke my wrist, so I wasn't really very comfortable or feeling like doing anything. Then it took it out of me when I broke my wrist and banged my head. It was quite a bang on the head, you see. Had to have all sorts of scans done and um, things like that. Just bumped into those little adventurers there, um, carrying their all their gear with them. One girl's crying on the bed, but somebody's thick, somebody's coming to rescue her. Her knees locked or something. So, I mean, it is quite a big challenge for some young people to do, especially if they haven't really fit enough. You know what I mean? They put them on these courses and sometimes they're not very, what they call, physical people. I don't know, they might have to send, what would you send out here to get her then? They'd have to send a jeep out, wouldn't they? That's quite an interesting little picture of that. A little bit of bog there with the tree. So I say you've got to be careful walking around here. Let me just turn off and take that picture. So there's an example of a mound being totally wrecked. You know? Right. Here's a mound here, look, that was probably much bigger once here, but the root was going through it. A couple of people out on horses. And cool, look at that, Row Barrow Warren coming in view. Fancy that. <laughs> Row Barrel Warren. <sighs> it always reminds me of Cheddar when I'm over here, you know. I feel like I should be going back to Cheddar now. That's what it feels like to me that I should be, where those ponies are going, I should be going past Tiny's Farm and back to get the 126, which I was getting for many years. It's like I said, I feel bereaved. I feel bereaved by not having that bus anymore. It's actually denied me going to Cheddar without an expense. You're talking about 20 quid. A taxi there and a taxi back. And there's only one taxi service and he's grumpy. He's actually a grumpy bloke. Right, it's okay though, we'll be going into Roeborough Warren in a minute. We'll be following a path just down there a bit. So there we go, folks. Let's just zoom in again one more time. The trick point's right up there. Right up in the distance now, where that tree is.
Right, we're turning off one of the tracks heading for the gate to get into the into the woods, into the forest, into the Robert Warren. There's two gates, there's one I got a feeling there's one here. I know there's one over there, it's very very boggy that way. So I'm not going that way, although it is quicker. I'm not going that way. It's too risky to go in the undergrowth because of ticks. So I'm not going to risk it. Anyway, we were right over there earlier. We'd been through that edge of the forest there. And then we went all the way up on the south, on the north side, right round, right to the top there to the trick point. We climbed up to the trick point. So it's been a nice walk. We've still got a long way back yet, but we can enjoy it. It's a nice day. Did get a bit nippy just back there, so I put my top back on. And I took then the sun went in, so I took my hat off. But we'll be going into the shelter of the wood in a minute. And uh So that'll be good. Like I said, the heather's looking really nice. Really, really pretty, the heather. Two types. A pinker one and a darker one. Now quite often this is where you see the big herd of cows because there's a type of water hole up there that on very, very hot days they gather around. Yeah, by the time the walk's progressed, after about four or five hours, my breathing settles. It takes that long, you know. Now, it can go backwards because I've just had cheese. Right. I've just had a lump of cheese. Which could mean indigestion. Isn't that lovely though? Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous, everybody? I love this place. I love the Quantox. I just love this place. I feel alive, at peace when I'm here. I mean, at least the house has settled down a bit more now. And uh, it's settled down quite a bit now. I just love this place. When I when I was a when I was just retired before I got my pension, I had to rely for a whole short while on state benefits because I was, you know, going to retire early anyway because I had a type of burnout. I was just working myself to death basically. But anyway, basically. I had to pay for the bus fare in the beginning. I never came out here quite as much, but I always made sure I did get out here. So it wasn't totally free, but I felt like this was something that was free. Once I got here, this was something that was free. And that's what I said, the, a lot of the good things are actually free. When people are down because they've got no money or I think, you have to find a way because money ain't going to come on the trees and you don't want to work yourself to death you know what I mean because then there's no time and then you get ill you've got to keep the balance so if you aren't well and you have to stay home or you've just retired you really do need it's not filling a gap it's finding areas in your life that will make you feel blessed. I mean I feel like this is a gift I've got when I'm out here. When I broke my wrist, okay it won't be leg, but it did immobilize me quite a lot. Doing zips up buttons, doing my rucksack. I had to carry a very very light rucksack but it was the winter and I wasn't carrying loads of water. But I was in pain a lot. But I found 
better when I was out. Now before, so that was a physical injury. Now, I also do family tree. I'm doing a study with uh, Cambridge University. You also have to keep your mind happy. You know, and you, it does, education never stops. You know, some people say, oh, you're a perpetual student. Yeah, we all are, actually. It's just sometimes a structured course is good. It helps you focus. So, you know, and they're the experts and they can teach you stuff. Right, now we've got a choice here. There's a gate there. Or we can go down to one a bit further, the big gate. I don't know if I've been through that one for a while. I know I got in and went, hugged the fence, but I was doing a different thing that day. I just see. If it takes me out into the Christmas tree area, I'll follow it, because it will link up with that other big track down there. Yeah, this is the smaller way in. But I might decide to go down through the bigger gate. I'll just see what it looks like. If it looks very, very overgrown. i got a feeling there's a path, though. It leads you down to that one. I can remember taking some photos from there. Yeah, remember now. There were the cows were coming. And they were coming right across. They looked quite in a hurry. And I was the other side of that gate. And all these cows started ploughing up there towards the water hole. Yeah, remember now. Yeah, we'll go here. I did lovely videos out here that day. That was when I was exploring the new valley, the new coombe. I was doing it in reverse. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, I'll walk down for a track over there in a minute. That's right. I want a new gate as well. Looks newish. Oh, it's not even shut. Oh, this is hurting. I think we had trouble with this gate last time. Yeah, I remember resting here for a little while and seeing all the cows coming right along in front of me. And took some pictures. It was a better day weather wise. We've timed it right. Right, over and out folks while I take a picture.